like something. I mean, but hey, if you hate it, that great. I guess I won't be getting a book sale from you. Yes, maybe is what it is. <laughs> That's exactly it. So, how did you come and write this book? Well, that one started with an interesting question. The, back, the, the great story behind that is it started with a question went out between my best friend and his wife, and his wife had you know, always you know, been trying to find me a wife oh, to okay. you know, get yeah, me to, to yeah, yeah. Try to get me to settle down, and um, she hasn't had a lot of success at doing that. She's <laughs> not picked a lot of winners. But we were laughing about all the crazy stuff that people do to try to find love, and how people end up settling because they don't want to be alone, and then they'll end up divorced, and, we had friends that we all went to high school with that, you know, um, <laughs> just, you, you know, they've been divorced twice before they're even 30, got yeah. kids by different parents, and you're like, really? I mean, that's just really sad. So it started with that question, and I wanted to find out. I wanted to find out why people do what they do. And, you know, so we started doing research, and then I started interviewing people. I started, you know, when I was, you know, going on the dating scene and finding out what people were looking for and why they resort to things like online dating and dating services and, um, you know, of course, the, my favorite is the, you know, these people that spend like literally hundreds or thousands of dollars to some dating service to get like a profile and photos and blah, 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 <laughs> and it never works out for them. And I'm thinking, you know, the two great loves of my life, I've met literally by accident, <laughs> and it seems like all the great things in our life we do meet by accident. Mm -hmm. So, but it, that's that's how it started. So, you know, again, you know, we came up with these ten characters who are archetypes for the type of people that we are, and we started doing research. I mainly did the research, but I didn't have a little help doing it. Okay. And after about a year and a half of interviews and dating and you know, things of that nature. You know, I had this a series of wonderful stories that I put into this book, and that's how it came about. I understand that all the stories in the book are based on real stories. <laughs> yes, they are. I, I wish that I could tell you that I made some of this up. I really didn't. Some of them are based on things that have happened to me. Okay. Some of them are things that have happened to other people. And that's weird because nobody believes the story about the call girl, which is in the book. Now I know I'm probably really intrigued. You're like, there's a call girl. Oh, what's the story? Yeah, about? I know. But you know, I actually had a friend who met the woman of his dreams, and you know, turned out, you know, uh, she was a call girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, put herself through nursing school that way. And I will not. I'm not mentioning names or anything like that. And and then they somehow made it work. So I have no judgments anymore about yeah, how people find love, because we find it in all different ways. And you claim that all the characters are archetypes. What are they? Well, you know, your archetypes are your symbols for something, and archetypes can have a different forms. For these characters, you have the naive, you have the perfectionist, you have the playboy, um, the insecure, the do-gooder, the romantic, the flirt, the fool, and the tragedy, and the nerd. Okay, mm -hmm. and I think that we all fit within one of these categories somehow, some way. Uh, maybe we're a combination of two, but um, you know, you can attribute it to looking at you know, like what sign people are. You know, I'm a Libra, I'm a Pisces, whatever, and that kind of helps determine what your qual, you know, what your characteristics are, and how you are, and how you look at life. Well, it's the same thing for these people, and. Um, you know, we wrote them out as archetypes to show people like this is us and all of us fall into one of these categories we can't escape it okay we just have to deal with it and there isn't anything really bad about either one of them maybe the fool the fool is kind of a bad character because it's <laughs> the guy that does throw away what's good in his life and you know or as I attribute it to him the guy that you know beats his girlfriend and <laughs> you know so, you know, a chauvinist pig and thinks women are less than men and, and all that mess. Uh, that's how we portrayed that character in the book. And, um, and I, I say we because if it weren't for the, the guy that, that that character is not based on and I hadn't seen him for real in action over the years, 
I never would have been able to write that character to a T. So um, thank you, Sam, wherever you are. <laughs> and yes, that is his real name. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He won't be watching the show anyway. <laughs> so which character can you relate to the most? Well, that one I'm not going to give away. Um, I, I think it's fun to have people who know me try to figure out okay. which character I'm at. And, and the people that know me very well, um, they, they're, you know, um, they can pick me pretty well. Okay. Let's just say that you know one of those characters in there, yes, tags me to a T in, in some ways, and um, you know it makes for a lot of laughs. So, like I said, you'll just have to read the book, and if you get to know who I am, you can figure that part out. All right, more mystery. There you go. <laughs> Got to sell the book somehow. That's right. <laughs> As if sex in the title isn't enough. <laughs> that shouldn't be enough. Ah, yeah. Right well, there's not very many Barnes and Noble stores that like to carry my book, from what I understand. So apparently, you got to have a little bit more with that retail chain. I don't know. <laughs> and so, your last book is *The Lonely Girl*. It's the darkest book you've ever written. Is it based on anything that really happened to you? Uh, yes, and no. I mean, there. You know, I obviously I take my literary license to some degree, but it, like everything that I've written, it is based on something real based on um, you know, what can happen uh, to people. So I, I shared in the experiences a little bit, but you know, it is loosely based on you know, somebody else and her life and you know, everything that transpired. And so it's, and it definitely is dark. Um, people are very right that it is the darkest novel that I have written. And um, I think going through what I did at the time, and that helped me, you know, I wouldn't have been able to write the book if I hadn't gone through that. So, what makes it so dark? I think it makes it dark because it, it, as a reader, you have to go to a place that you don't that you don't often go in literature. I mean, and that's the way I try to think. You have to deal with somebody that literally is an insane and very a very damaged person, you know, the drug addict, the one that wants to commit suicide. And you know, while it's fine to mention those things, to make a great dark novel, you know, you have to deal with why they're doing this and why they're so bad and why, you know, what what is for what's the driving force in their life that's putting them into that place. Um, and then, you know, trying to explain how they get out, if they get out at all. And, you know, I've been criticized that it's not a very happy novel, mm -hmm. but I think sometimes if we're going to base things on truth, it's not always going to be happy, and we have to be prepared for that. Um, happy novels, I think, can make you feel all gooey and great, and, you know, you want to run through a meadow with birds chirping and and all that, and that's that's fine. I mean, you know, some of those things can make you, you know, inspired. But the ones that really make you take stock in yourself and make you take a full heart look at yourself in the mirror are the ones that always end happy. Because if you can see yourself in one of those characters, you have to ask, why am I that type of character? Am I that bad? Am I that tragic? 